So in this lecture, uh, we are going to understand uh, pool boiling heat transfer and what are the different characteristics, how do we model the pool boiling and what is pool boiling to begin with. So let us uh, start this lecture. So boiling at the surface of a body immersed in an extensive pool of motionless liquid is generally referred to as pool boiling. In the last lecture, we have seen the example of uh, this tea making. And this is a very good example, in fact, of uh, pool boiling. And now, uh, uh, there are several engineering important processes where pool boiling is utilized, uh, starting from metallurgical quenching, for example, uh, shell side boiling in a heat exchanger, flooded type heat exchanger, in electronics cooling application, so uh, also in nuclear reactors, for example. Now, uh, we have seen uh, a single nucleating bubble in the last lecture. Now, in the pool boiling, of course, several nucleation sites are active and uh, therefore uh, the process is statistical in nature and we have to understand how to model it. So, uh, this process of pool boiling is affected by the applied heat flux. That means how much of the Q uh, is what we are giving uh, uh, to the heater. Uh, and then, of course, the degree of superheat will be decided depending upon uh, the, as we have said in the last lecture, uh, depending upon uh, the active nucleation sites, what type of a physical morphology you have, and what is the thermophysical properties of the fluid uh, which you want to boil. So that will determine the degree of superheat, which will be the degree of superheat means uh, the the difference between the wall temperature here uh, and uh, the uh, the, the, the bulk fluid temperature, which is the saturation temperature. Uh, then the thermophysical properties of the fluid which you want to uh, utilize, naturally the surface tension, the specific heat as we have seen, uh, the Nusselt number will depend on uh, the Prandtl number, the Jacob number, the Bond number and the buoyancy number, uh, which will be, which we have studied in the last lecture. Uh, also we have seen that uh, the surface material and surface finish uh, will affect the cavity size distribution and therefore uh, it will affect the number of nucleation sites and therefore the pool boiling heat transfer. Uh, and then lastly of course the length scale of the heater. In our discussion today uh, we will confine the discussion to, uh, to those type of heaters uh, in which uh, the heaters are not uh, very small uh, in fact and uh, they uh, uh, the, the bubble departure diameter and the, uh, the, the length scale of the heater is much larger than the uh, bubble departure diameter. <clears throat> so uh, if, the, if the heater is very small, then the bubble can completely engulf it. Uh, and uh, so therefore the heat transfer may uh, be quite different for such small heaters. <laughs> now let us understand a simple experiment first. Uh, we can uh, think of a, of a small wire. Uh, you know, this was one of the initial experiments uh, which was recorded by Nukiyama. We will just, uh, in, the, in the coming lectures, in the coming slides, we will be talking about the Nukiyama curve. So let us try to understand a simple experiment in, an, in, a, in which a wire is, uh, an, a wire is, a metallic wire is getting heated up uh, by supplying some current uh, through it. And as the temperature rises, uh, we can control uh, the power here and slowly the power is raised and we can measure the temperature of the we can measure the temperature of the wire by a suitable placed uh, thermocouple uh, and uh, there is some liquid let us say water uh, and it is uh, uh, you know at uh, at a certain temperature we can start with room temperature and slowly it gets heated up so what happens is that let us assume right now that the water is at uh, the, the water is at 100 degrees and uh, we can do this experiment either with a constant heat flux or a constant temperature. In this experiment, it is the heat flux which can be controlled. So what do you see when you slowly increase the heat flux? You know? So initially, as, you, as the temperature of the wire gets uh, increased, uh, you know, uh, to a small extent, let us say it becomes 101 degree centigrade. 
uh, you will see that uh, immediately natural convection will start because the density of the water will uh, at higher temperature at 101 degree let us say is high, is the density becomes lower uh, than the surrounding water which is at 100 degree centigrade and uh, right now no bubbles have started but natural convection will start so this is the first uh, part where uh, we, there are no bubbles so bubbling has still not started as we have recalled in the last uh, lecture the onset of boiling will only take place uh, when the cavities become active and for them to become active the temperature has to be slightly more than the saturation temperature because you have to satisfy the young laplace condition and the uh, clausius clapeyron equation uh, so that uh, the bubble can grow it requires a higher pressure inside uh, to maintain the equilibrium of the interface and because uh, that pressure the corresponding saturation temperature at that pressure uh, will be higher than uh, uh, you know 100 degree centigrade and therefore depending on whether the wire is very polished or it is rough uh, some of the nucleation sites will become active and then what you call as onb condition that is the onset of nucleate boiling uh, will occur at a certain uh, heat flux uh, uh, when you see isolated single bubbles now if you increase the heat flux further uh, you know you will see a lot of bubbles but you can still see them individually that means you can count them probably from this nucleation site from this nucleation site you know bubbles will rise and we are still able to calculate uh, we are still able to see individual bubbles which will come out from this uh, wire surface now as you increase the heat flux further uh, you know uh, the, as we have seen some of the videos in the last lecture also uh, you will see uh, uh, you know multiple bubbles which are getting generated uh, side by side mo many more nucleation sites will become active uh, and uh, what you call as regimes of slugs and bubbles will start because some of them uh, some of the bubbles will start merging with each other and you may have get long long slugs uh, of bubbles will also get formed and you will have regimes of slugs and bubbles now as you start increasing the heat flux further uh, you know what happens is that now uh, the vapor generation near the wire is very large okay and you can see that most of these nucleation sites are now merged with each other and uh, there is a sort of a film getting formed okay along along the wire uh, you should also remember uh, that the, the the density of the vapor is very very low so typically at one atmosphere uh, you know one uh, the density of the water vapor is about 1600 times uh, you know lighter than uh, the liquid water and therefore you know a very small amount of mass of vapor will contain a lot of volume uh, you know because the density is very low so you can see even small amount of vapor which is generated near the wire and if all the nucleation sites become active you will see a blanket of a blanket of vapor film uh, which gets formed close to the wire and this is uh, the transition actually in a sense that uh, you can now see that initially you know uh, liquid uh, the liquid was in touch with the the liquid was in touch with the uh, wire so the higher density fluid was at the bottom uh, and vapor bubbles were rising uh, but uh, so this was happening in the individual bubble regime for example here uh, but later on what you see is that the lower density fluid is actually engulfing the wire here and you are forming a sort of a film uh, of uh, vapor uh, and uh, this film completely covers uh, the, the entire wire and uh, naturally uh, you can uh, intuitionally you can feel uh, that now because the vapor is in touch with the wire the uh, the heat transfer will will drop down quite a lot because now uh, you know in fact the the temperature of the wire will go up because the heat transfer has gone down and a certain amount of uh, radiation uh, heat transfer will also start playing a role in which the heat the heat actually uh, you know the wire radiates the heat to the liquid and then the uh, the at the at the interface uh, the vapor gets uh, you know formed in in this direction so essentially uh, we we see that uh, the when when you do this experiment in a controlled fashion uh, the several uh, regimes or morphological structures of the liquid and vapor are seen 
and this is a new dimension to heat transfer so far you have been studying single phase heat transfer and now you can immediately see that two phases are involved and these phases uh, depending on uh, the distribution of these phases uh, the physical morphology of the fluid uh, close to the heater changes uh, as we increase the heat flux or change the temperature or change the degree of superheat Uh, so these are the regimes uh, starting from natural convection onset of boiling individual bubble regime regime of flux and bubbles transition to film boiling and then immediately after that there is a stable film boiling which takes place so now the question is how do we model uh, this particular phenomena uh, and try to relate it to the the local heat transfer coefficient uh, you know which will be uh, manifested uh, under these different regimes so now let us see uh, uh, this experimental results and uh, first we will do a, at at constant heat flux this experiment and uh, what we are going to measure is the wall temperature tw uh, here uh, tw is the is the wire temperature or the wall temperature we are going to measure the t fluid uh, you know which is uh, the the fluid temperature the bulk temperature of the fluid which is the saturation temperature we will try to maintain it Uh, so t w minus t f will give you or t wall minus t saturation uh, will give you uh, the uh, the degree of superheat so we will plot the degree of superheat in the x axis here uh, and whatever is the heat flux at that uh, so if you are controlling the heat flux then you will control the dc power here and the t w will come out as a as a experimental result and if you are maintaining the constant temperature then you will maintain the t wall uh, as the uh, uh, the controlling parameter and the dependent parameter will then be the q double dot that is the heat flux so in the first case let us uh, have constant heat flux as the boundary condition so we are maintaining the q so so what happens is uh, we start uh, at a certain low q at point a Uh, so at point a to um, now remember if if we write q uh, double dot is equal to uh, you know h times delta t uh, you know uh, then uh, h is equal to q double dot by delta t so which is essentially the the slope of this particular curve which you see on the a b c d e f g h uh, this curve which is uh, which we are getting uh, the slope of this line will be representative of the heat transfer coefficient uh so so let us start with a low q so from a to b we have the natural convection regime uh, you know in which no bubbles are formed uh, and then you continue a little bit higher and immediately a bubble gets formed because of which a heat transfer increases uh, and the slope of this line a b and the slope of this line d e are quite different you can see that the heat transfer increases and therefore since you are controlling the q at a certain q value uh, you know the bubble gets formed and immediately as soon as the bubble gets formed uh, your uh, your wall temperature drops you know and therefore the delta t drops so you go from c to d actually so uh, if you do it carefully you will be able to record this phenomena in which uh, as you are increasing the q so you are at a this is natural convection then b is still natural convection Uh, as you are following up at at a higher q uh, you are reaching the point c where the onset of uh, you know at c the onset of nucleate boiling takes place and as soon as the onset takes place the heat transfer increases and therefore the wall temperature decreases uh, as you can see from here uh, q is equal to h delta t so at the same q bubble has started and therefore the delta t will reduce because h has increased and you can see the slope now uh, the slope has changed now so now you are on this slope Uh, previously you were on this slope you know at 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 uh, in the natural convection slope so let me uh, rub these things so that it is clean again okay uh, so now uh, from d to e you will have isolated bubble regime you know so this is as you are increasing the q you now uh, you now reach uh, here uh, you have isolated bubble regime more and more bubbles are getting formed now but you can still Uh, you can still sort of uh, you know see those individual bubbles now after a while many nucleation sites will begin and as you keep keep on increasing the heat flux you will have uh, from e to f uh, you will have slugs and bubbles you know so you will have a regime of slugs and bubbles which we were just seeing now what happens at f now at f 
if you are operating at this heat flux here which is corresponding to q uh, f uh, you know uh, anything after this if you increase what is going to happen is the wall temperature is suddenly going to rise so you can see the wall temperature suddenly rises okay uh, so you 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 are following this path and then now you are here and then anything increase any increase in q which you do suddenly the wall temperature increases because mind you the saturation temperature is is the the, the whole water is at the same temperature t saturation uh, the only thing which is happening is we are increasing the q so uh, tw is tw is uh, t wall is getting uh, increased so uh, at 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 a the t wall was uh, this much at at b the tw minus t sat was uh, this much uh, then the wall temperature dropped you know from c uh, a little drop and then the wall temperature continues to increase up to this point and any increase further from q here will suddenly increase the uh, the wall temperature so what is happening here this is called as the critical heat flux that is the q double dot max uh, you know and from then f to g uh, you know from this from this point onwards you know uh, the 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 film boiling will start and after a while of course the temperature of the wire will become so hot that it may it may lead to a burnout that means it may reach the uh, the the limiting temperature that means it's the melting temperature of the of the heater material and the material may may completely burn out from here now uh, we have shown this dotted line g so usually one can do an experiment of increasing heat flux and decreasing heat flux so when you uh, when you increase the heat flux uh, you actually uh, you actually go in this on on this curve here okay that is a b c this and then you go here and then you are burn out now if you start decreasing the heat flux from h usually because of hysteresis uh, we have seen contact angle hysteresis so because of hysteresis the water uh, the, the 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 here it is film boiling please remember so now as you decrease the heat flux the the liquid will slowly start it will start getting cooled down so liquid will start touching the heater uh, and then the wall temperature will drop and you will come to a q minimum uh, you know and then uh, so so in the decreasing heat flux you may you may then go right li like that okay so we will see that in the next slide okay uh, how it is done so this is uh, what i was talking about uh, just now so you can see a b c d e uh, you know f g h hmm? uh, so from so from increasing heat flux you will actually go like this and in decreasing heat flux you will come like this okay so this e to f you can see it's a negative slope region and uh, this is uh, in in a constant heat flux boundary condition experiment uh, you do not uh, achieve this dotted line you essentially go like this and then you come back like that and there is this because of the hysteresis so that hysteresis now you can see here uh, at at e you are getting a chf uh, more or less you are reaching the chf limit or uh, you know from e you will as soon as you go a little up you will go to chf here uh, and then this these liquid uh, interfaces which you can see here uh, they no more touch they no more touch the this thing and you actually uh, come to film boiling and at film boiling you can see a vapor blanket uh, completely uh, engulfing uh, the heater material here now when you start uh, go, uh, going further from g you will have uh, uh, you know uh, the uh, the path will be like this after a while the the surface may melt down uh, because it is too hot uh, and 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 then when you start reducing uh, the heat flux uh, this liquid will uh, tend to uh, again come back and adhere and you will go in the reverse direction so a to b is natural convection then followed by regimes of slugs individual bubbles onset of uh, i mean so if from uh, you go like this uh, onset of boiling individual bubbles regimes of slugs and bubbles and then film boiling and then chf okay so this is how uh, the the entire cycle will uh, will be manifested uh, when you do this experiment uh, in constant temperature of course uh, now in this case you are actually controlling the temperature so you are going in this direction so again the same thing will happen but at c when the onset takes place your heat flux increases 
So in, in this experiment, the heat flux is the dependent parameter. So as soon as you come to see a little increase in temperature, will increase the heat flux enormously, and then again the slope changes. Now uh, this slope is the as you as we have seen, this is the heat transfer coefficient, uh, and uh, this slope increases, uh, and and then you follow up to F. Now uh, at F, if you increase the temperature further, uh, naturally the heat transfer is going to go down. and therefore uh, you will go to g uh, so this dotted line uh, you know which we have seen in the earlier figure uh, will now be traced because you are you are controlling the temperature so the heat flux reduces uh, and then again from here film boiling starts and eventually there will be burn out so this particular graph uh, this particular graph uh, which you get which is a very typical signature of a pool boiling heat transfer Uh, this graph uh, is actually called as the nukiyama curve uh, because the nukiyama the japanese uh, researcher was the first one who uh, who described this experiment uh, in a methodical fashion uh, and this particular characteristic n type of a uh, n type of a figure you know this n uh, shaped figure uh, which also uh, incidentally uh, uh, you know corresponds to his name nukiyama Uh, which came out uh, as a characteristic signature uh, of pool boiling heat transfer so uh, this curve is very important to understand how uh, the different regimes of pool boiling are manifested uh, how they can be uh, seen uh, in a real time experiment and this experiment as i said can be done in two ways uh, constant heat flux or constant temperature uh, and one can get and the characteristic curves uh, of the pool boiling in these two uh, boundary conditions so this is a typical experimental setup in a lab uh, where pool boiling experiments are done uh, and you can see uh, the pool you can see the heater here uh, the details of the heater are also there some thermocouples are there inside this heater uh, and this heater is kept on a uh, on a insulated block here Uh, this heater is exposed to boiling uh, on the top the liquid is filled up and then this the condenser on the top uh, it maintains the pressure whatever is the required pressure inside the chamber uh, and you can then supply uh, the heater with some power uh, and the data from the thermocouples uh, the pressure transducer uh, and 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 then uh, the, the the heater block uh, this can all be measured uh, through the data acquisition system on a on a pc so here you can see Uh, a typical experimental uh, you know uh, setup inside the laboratory so if you see the data which is recorded uh, for the nucleate pool boiling uh, from an experimental setup which we have just seen uh, it 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 is evident that it will be difficult to obtain any general theoretical method for calculating the heat transfer coefficient Uh, the experimental data is as shown on the right hand side uh, in this figure and uh, this pertains to uh, the the nucleate pool boiling regime that means the the natural convection regime which is below this and uh, this is the chf more or less of uh, beyond this point will be the chf so this is uh, the portion of the curve nukiyama curve uh, which is uh, for uh, the nucleate pool boiling so this is the data and as you can see the heater is rotated uh, from 0 to 180 degrees nearly uh, and uh, we can see that uh, at at a particular uh, degree of superheat uh, the uh, the data for uh, for horizontal uh, heater uh, uh, you know is uh, the 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 heat flux uh, in the reverse direction actually is coming out to be much more Uh, than uh, the vertical uh, the, the horizontal heater uh, as you can see from the symbols here uh, uh, which is uh, quite obvious because uh, uh, you know when when the when the heater is when the heater is flat uh, the bubble the bubble just rises uh, on the top but when the, the when the heater is nearly 180 degrees uh, then the, the 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 bubble as it goes up it sweeps the entire surface Uh, and 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 disturbs the complete boundary layer so several of these bubbles they will swipe the surface clean and therefore the heat flux in the reverse direction of the heater uh, you know at 175 uh, degrees uh, uh, orientation uh, is actually coming out to be quite high as compared to 
the horizontal heater anyway uh, so uh, the main reason uh, behind the fact that we cannot have a general theoretical framework uh, for uh, modeling nucleation nucleate pool boiling uh, is because of the fact that these nucleation sites uh, you know they become active or not active uh, depending on the physical condition and the preparation of the surface uh, how well the liquid wets the surface which we have seen in our last lecture and how are the cavities trapping gas or vapor so uh, so we need to now uh, you know have some mathematical framework to model uh, this type of a curve uh, mind you this is a log log scale uh, so delta t uh, tw minus t sat and uh, the x and the y axis are plotted on the log scale here uh, so we need to model uh, pool boiling you know and uh, how to do that is what we are going to uh, do next so let us look at some general observations of uh, the nucleate pool boiling data uh, if you see the models, uh, most of them they suggest like a power law dependency. Now, the power law dependency means that the heat flux uh, is dependent on the nucleation site density and the wall superheat. Uh, so, it is proportional to Na dash to the power x and Tw minus T sat to the power y as has been shown here. And then if you, if you see, uh, 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 try to fit the correlation, uh, such a power law correlation with the experimental data, uh, you will see that the x depends on uh, you know between 0.2 to 0.8 and this y exponent is between 1 to 2. Uh, so basically it's a non-linear relationship uh, between q uh, and uh, delta t and uh, the nucleation site density. Uh, now the, pr the thing is that we have seen that this nucleation site density also depends on the temperature of the wall itself. So the heater temperature uh, and uh, the, the which nucleation site will become active, we have seen in the last lecture that uh, depending on uh, the nucleation site geometry, uh, you know the, the depth and the wettability of the fluid and the, the radius of the cavities, uh, you know this itself is a function, this Na is a function of Tw. Uh, so if we take general engineering surfaces then most of the systems uh, you can uh, you can uh, uh, you know it, it is very difficult to uh, count the nucleation sites so then people started uh, generally fitting uh, you know q as a uh, as a uh, function of delta t and you see that uh, the a comes out to be of the order of 3 to 3.3 .3. So what it means is that uh, uh, the 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 heat flux is proportional to the third power of the degree of superheat or Tw minus T sat. Uh, because uh, in general you can assume that most engineering surfaces have a, a cavity size distribution uh, which comes because of the machining process or the drawing process or the manufacturing process of that heater and uh, 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 typically it will be very difficult to count the nucleation sites. So without bothering about the Na uh, we, if we just plot Q as a function of delta T, uh, we will see that in boiling heat transfer, the Q is proportional to the third power. Uh, you know, most of the data sets, uh, especially of water, uh, will, uh, will adhere to this type of a power law uh, variation. Now, in terms of mathematical modeling from first principles, because, uh, you know, active nucleation site density is a, is a function of the controlling parameter, which is Tw, uh, so there is a sort of a circular effect and we cannot uh, you know count the number of nucleation sites uh, at different uh, regimes of pool boiling or in in this in this in this region uh, and uh, therefore you know and the bubbles are also it is very difficult to calculate the bubble departures or frequencies and therefore uh, you know statistically speaking we know that uh, q is uh, q double dot is proportional to delta t to the power 3 of that order uh, you know uh, but uh, this is just a thumb rule and uh, uh, you know fundamental modeling uh, needs uh, some more uh, uh, you know inputs uh, so uh, you know what we what we see is that if you assume a power law uh, and then you say that h is h delta t uh, you know q is also equal to h delta t uh, then you will see that uh, you know this uh, h is h, h becomes proportional to q double dash a minus one upon a, uh, where the value of a come as we know is about three. So now the question is how to estimate this heat transfer coefficient is something which uh, we we would like to understand. Uh, 
okay uh, mind you that the boiling heat transfer is pretty high in fact uh, so uh, for example the third uh, uh, the exponent 3 uh, suggests that if you if you increase uh, let's say if you double uh, the uh, the delta t uh, then q will be of the order of 8 times increase so it's it's pretty large the heat transfer coefficient is quite high uh, and uh, we would like to uh, try to model it uh, from first principle so there are two practical approaches of how to do, go about doing this uh, the first one is somehow uh, you somehow include the effect of surface texture which is not so easy and then the second thing is ignore all surface effects and produce a method which predicts the value of heat transfer for a given heat flux okay so usually a hybrid uh, technique is usually applied and it is assumed that uh, we are talking about normal engineering uh, substrates Uh, which have uh, a, a uniform distribution of different cavity sizes uh, and it is not uh, very polished or uh, you know uh, a special surface these are uh, when we talk about the third uh, uh, you know power law uh, of the exponent 3 uh, this is typically uh, applicable to uh, to normal engineering metallic surfaces which are used in heat transfer applications so now uh, you know with this background uh, let us try to see what uh, rosenau did uh, you know uh, in terms of fundamental understanding of pool boiling so what the main idea of uh, the rosenau model uh, it goes back to jacob and linke in 1935 uh, who actually described uh, the, the pool boiling in a very systematic way for the first time in the scientific community Uh, so what the model was that it essentially says that okay we extend the idea of our single phase understanding uh, to the two phase system so now how do you do that so basically uh, the two uh, there are two premises one is that nucleating bubbles will induce motion to the surrounding fluid as we see while we make tea uh, we have also seen videos that when the when the vapor, uh, when the bubble uh, rises up it induces a lot of motion uh, close to the close to the wall and this increases the convective heat transfer so you have now you know the single phase convection heat transfer and you know that uh, we have seen in the from convective transport theory uh, that nusselt is proportional to a constant reynolds to the power a prandtl to the power b or uh, uh, you know reynolds to the power n and prandtl to the power m here so now if you extend this basic model this power law of the single phase convection Uh, to uh, you know nucleate pool boiling uh, what we uh, the philosophically what we would like to do is we would like to define a bubble reynolds number uh, you know which uh, and and naturally uh, the bubble reynolds number will require uh, us to define a length scale uh, and a velocity scale so in a pipe flow for example you know the diameter of the pipe is the length scale uh, and the velocity average velocity is the is the velocity scale Uh, but in this case we will have to uh, we will have to devise uh, a, a proper length scale and a proper velocity scale so if we are able to do that then we can probably define a reynolds number which is the bubble reynolds number so what is this length scale uh, for the pool boiling experiments and what is the velocity scale that is what rosenau did and uh, he inserted uh, this uh, lb and ub uh, in the in the equation of reynolds number Uh, and this reynolds number can now be put into the standard equation or the power law equation where nusselt is a function of reynolds and prandtl uh, and from there he tried to predict uh, the heat transfer coefficient so the idea was to extend uh, the platform of single phase convective heat transfer to uh, pool boiling uh, by incorporating a proper length scale for the bubble uh, and a proper velocity scale for the bubble so what is the length scale So Rosenau adopted the length scale to be the bubble departure diameter. Now, as you know, as you will recall, the bond number. Uh, you recall the bond number which we studied in the last class. Uh, okay, so bond number was the ratio of uh, the the surface tension forces to the gravity forces, uh, or the buoyancy forces. The buoyancy forces are represented by G delta rho, uh, and uh, the surface tension is by sigma. Uh, so sigma upon uh, R, for example, or sigma upon D. so uh, what it tells you is that uh, the uh, the the departure diameter or or the length scale when the when the bubble will depart 
uh, is uh, when the buoyancy force takes over the surface tension force. So as the bubble grows, it sticks to the wall because of the surface tension. But as it grows bigger and bigger, its volume increases. Uh, and therefore, because of the fact that uh, G into delta rho uh, is increasing, um, um, uh, the volume is increasing, uh, and therefore the buoyant forces are increasing. So a stage will come when the buoyant force, uh, you know, the bubble will become bigger, and the buoyant force will be overcoming the surface tension force, and at that time the bubble will depart. So uh, this departure diameter was taken as uh, the uh, the length scale uh, in the Rosenau model. And as you can see from the definition of bond number, uh, we can see the departure diameter as sigma upon g delta rho under root. Uh, and with a constant which is multiplied here, this constant is because uh, of, as I said in the last class, it is the contact angle which is not really known. So when, the, when it is hydrophobic, uh, the surface forces are low. When it is hydrophilic, the surface forces are high. And therefore, uh, some constant uh, needs to be multiplied here so, to as, so as to get the proper length scale. And what is the velocity scale? Uh, the velocity scale can be conveniently uh, derived from the fact that uh, the, the, the bubble velocity depends on the heat flux. Uh, also, uh, if, if, you have a smaller, uh, if you have a smaller latent heat, uh, then naturally the bubble growth will be faster. Uh, because uh, the latent at a very small latent heat uh, the vaporization takes place and uh, the liquid mass gets converted into vapor mass uh, and and then the vapor volume is pretty low therefore uh, rho v is also in the denominator so if you see q divided by q double dot divided by rho v hfg uh, you get a velocity scale meters per second so if you if you do that at as a homework uh, you will see that uh, this is this is meters per second velocity scale and this is a very convenient uh, velocity scale in a two phase system so what we do is we actually define the reynolds number we put the velocity scale as q divided by uh, rho g hfg uh, and uh, the length scale of the bubble as uh, coming from the bond number uh, here uh, okay so this this uh, uh, because you know the thermophysical properties sigma and g delta rho uh, so you put that uh, and, and, and then you find the Reynolds number, the Prandtl number is already known to you. So you put this Reynolds number here so that you can get the Nusselt number for pool boiling. So when uh, Rosenau did this experiment, so you can do this and you will, uh, you will derive this equation by substituting the Reynolds number. And you will see uh, that uh, for water, uh, you know, R is equal to 0.33 and S is equal to 1.7. Uh, if you put that here, uh, you you fit you fit very nicely the pool boiling uh, the pool boiling curve uh, the Nukiyama curve of delta T versus Q uh, of course for the nucleate pool boiling regime uh, CHF is here and then after that is of course film boiling which we are not bothered about uh, at, at this moment of time uh, but what uh, Rosenau also realized was that uh, you know you cannot fit all the data okay uh, because uh, as we have seen. Uh, the above equation requires the knowledge of liquid solid surface dependent constant which is the sea surface uh, and uh, this is a problem uh, with uh, pool boiling because as we have seen it depends on uh, the surface morphology so Rosenau uh, actually uh, you know suggested a lot of the surface correction values uh, depending on what type of uh, material was getting pool boiled on what type of a surface. So for example, water on scored copper, water on polished copper, uh, water on emery polished paraffin treated copper, uh, it had different values. So this is one of the limitations of this model. Uh, however, uh, Rosenau does give you a framework uh, by which uh, you know uh, one can understand uh, pool boiling in a fundamental way that every pool boiling uh, phenomena is actually a superposition of the convective uh, you know uh, heat transfer which is uh, which is uh, catalyzed uh, by the bubbles which are rising and these rising bubbles give rise to local disturbance of the boundary layer at the heater surface and this actually uh, you know leads to an enhancement of heat transfer uh, and naturally the latent heat uh, plays a role in terms of uh, you know the bubble growth and the departure diameter uh, gives you the appropriate length scale and the q divided by rho g hfg uh, gives you the the velocity scale 
and then you can extend the single phase convective heat transfer ideas uh, to pool boiling. Uh, naturally, uh, it is limited by the fact that the CSF uh, has to be introduced for every uh, different type of a surface. Uh, nevertheless, Rosenau was the first, uh, you know, sort of an analytical treatment uh, which was uh, based on some scaling, uh, uh, you know, philosophy uh, wherein uh, you know, the pool boiling heat transfer could be predicted uh, with the help of the extension of the single phase convective uh, type of a framework. Uh, later on, of course, uh, many other, uh, uh, you know, improvements uh, in the original Rosenau model were brought in because in the Rosenau model, uh, the, the, the pressure doesn't play a role. But as we know uh, that if you do pool boiling uh, at higher pressures or lower pressures, uh, the heat transfer coefficients are different. And therefore, uh, you know, the Froster and Zubair correlation, which you can see uh, on your screen, uh, here the last term is interpreted as a difference in saturation pressure corresponding to a difference in saturation temperature equal to the wall superheat. So uh, the pressure dependency was brought in uh, to pool boiling correlations. Uh, and uh, this, this Zubair correlation is quite often used in design applications uh, because uh, it, it fits the data pretty well. But as you can see, it also has these empirical, uh, you know, coefficients or, or exponents. Uh, and one has to be careful about the units. Uh, otherwise, uh, you know, uh, the answer will be wrong. And uh, for example, the liquid conductivity has to be in kilowatt per meter Kelvin the specific heat has to be in kilojoule per kg Kelvin and so on, as it has been written on the screen. So this is another example uh, of uh, the complex process of pool boiling. Uh, they're trying to model them. Uh, so Rosenau was one approach, uh, which was limited by the value of CSF, which had to be specified every time. Uh, in froster zubair correlation is more empirical, correla empirical exponents and constants which have to be fitted. But this gives also better results uh, than uh, Rosenau correlation. Uh, and then, uh, you know, industry, uh, industry prefers uh, uh, simple correlations which do not bother about, uh, uh, you know, the surface conditions or other things. Uh, and therefore, uh, the Stefan Abdel Salam correlations which are very simple, uh, straightforward correlations, which talk about uh, Q as a function of, uh, you know, delta T. Uh, and as you can see, most of the exponents are of the order of three, uh, you know, uh, one upon 0.3, uh, one upon 0.33. So you can see the third power law still more or less exists uh, for many range of fluids from water, hydrocarbons, cryogenic fluids, and for refrigerants. And uh, the C1, C2, C3 values uh, as a function of operating pressure uh, were provided by uh, Stefan Abdul Salam in, uh, in, in this International Journal of Heat and Mass Transfer paper, uh, wherein, uh, you know, you could directly take these values of C1, C2, C3, C4 from a graph uh, and the Tw minus Tsat is what you apply in your experiment uh, and from there you can get the heat flux. So these are the graphs for C1, C2, C3 and C4. Uh, so for water, uh, you have to read uh, the C1, C2 values from here, depending on at what pressure you are operating. So it takes care of the operating pressure also. Uh, and once you once you get the value of C1, you directly put it here, from, taking out from this graph, and uh, you know the Tw minus Tsat, uh, and from there you can get the Q value. Uh, similarly, for hydrocarbons, the value of C2 is given uh, on this sheet here, uh, from which you can directly read the value of C2 and uh, different pressure values uh, starting from uh, you know close to atmosphere to very high atmospheres uh, these values for different uh, hydrocarbons like acetone methanol uh, you know heptane hexane ethanol benzene heptane uh, etc are given uh, on this sheet uh, here we have cryogenic fluids the value of c3 uh, which can be directly put here uh, and uh, then we can get the value of the Q as a function of delta T. Uh, so this is for cryogenic fluids like helium, neon, nitrogen, methane, and ethane, ethylene. And finally, for refrigerants, some of the chlorofluorocarbons uh, is given on this particular uh, slide, number 21. 
so here also you can directly get the value of C4 depending on at what pressure you are doing the pool boiling of refrigerant and you can get the value of Q uh, for nucleate pool boiling. Uh, so this is uh, in the nutshell three types of uh, correlations. One is the Rosenau correlation uh, which is uh, based on scaling uh, let's say arguments. Uh, the Zubair correlation which is uh, an empirical type of a correlation which takes care of the operating pressure also and then finally very practical uh, industry friendly uh, correlations uh, by Stefan Abdul Salam uh, for uh, you know different types classes of uh, working fluids. So uh, this brings uh, to an end for this section. Uh, I will repeat that pool boiling is a very important heat transfer mechanism. Uh, it gives very high heat transfer coefficients in fact uh, understanding of pool boiling is important to appreciate the nuances of flow boiling also uh, although we are not going to take up flow boiling right now uh, but uh, nevertheless uh, once we understand the physics of pool boiling then it can be extended uh, with superposition of convection uh, in flow boiling also the rosenau model provides a reasonable framework to understand the physics of pool boiling uh, but industry prefers simple correlations like what we have just seen, which can be conveniently implemented. So in this section, in the section 4 of pool boiling, let us see some of the techniques of enhancement of pool boiling heat transfer. So there are, as we know that uh, boiling heat transfer depends on the surface morphology. So the surface morphology can be tweaked. Uh, uh, it can be engineered to enhance the heat transfer. So uh, we will recall that uh, the boiling occurs on preferred locations and uh, the nucleate uh, boiling depends on the number of active nucleation sites. So if we increase uh, the active nucleation sites and if we make sure that uh, many many nucleation sites are active uh, then uh, you know uh, the, the overall uh, heat transfer coefficient will increase because the surface morphology as we have seen in the last lecture uh, plays a very important role in nucleation. So how do we uh, do that? There are several surface treatment methods which are available uh, to enhance nucleation site density on boiling surfaces and uh, what we can do is we can do sintering of powder uh, on the surface for example as shown here uh, the brazing or flame spraying or electrolytic deposition or foaming can be done. Uh, so as to uh, you know form uh, the, 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 the local surface area near the heater can be increased by a porous deposition and this actually helps in increasing of the nucleation sites uh, because this is like uh, you know introducing additional roughness uh, on the surface. So uh, these are like the deposition of formed cavities on the surface. We can also make uh, mechanically formed cavities which uh, are designed in such a way uh, that they uh, uh, they entrap gas uh, or vapor and therefore uh, you know they will they will become active very quickly or at a low superheat uh, you know so uh, what what are what is done is actually uh, you know enhanced tubes are manufactured like this uh, in which uh, they have reentrant cavities so what are reentrant cavities uh, they are like uh, the, the, the type of schematic which is shown here because most naturally occurring sites are not re-entrant. Uh, in a re-entrant cavity, the interface curvature reverses when the liquid penetrates the mouth of the cavity. So as you can see here, uh, if you have an ink bottle, uh, you know, if you, if you know in the olden times we, are, we used to have ink, uh, ink bottles in, in such a shape. So if the cavity is of the ink bottle shape which is shown here, uh, you know then what will happen is the liquid when it tries to enter it uh, because uh, it has uh, a contact angle because of uh, because of this surface which is an ink bottle this reversal of surface is there uh, because of that uh, the the contact angle uh, you know the liquid will then tend to be like this and once the curvature uh, becomes negative then this vapor is not able to go out you know and therefore such cavities will always trap gas so re-entrant cavities of course can be of, of various shapes and sizes uh, and uh, these can be made uh, you know there are certain companies uh, who specialize in making this uh, this type of re-entrant cavities on the surface of tubes uh, and uh, uh, these are called as enhanced tubes and they essentially uh, help uh, in, in generating nucleation sites 
uh, and and enhance the heat transfer so as you can see artificial cavities are made uh, you can see pictorially here uh, bubble nucleation uh, is enhanced uh, the when the liquid tries to penetrate it it is not able to penetrate inside because of the ink bottle shape uh, of 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 such cavities uh, they have a small opening at the top and a larger volume below it uh, and uh, this can be done by mechanical swaging action for example as shown here uh, you know you can see uh, that the top portion of these fins is is mechanically deformed uh, so as to form uh, such cavities with a small mouth uh, at the top uh, you know and now when the liquid starts penetrating inside it forms a reverse meniscus here and because of which the vapor gets trapped here and this helps in further nucleation so these type of mechanically deformed uh, you know reentrant cavities uh, are uh, specially made for enhancement of pool boiling uh, for example in the petrochemical industry and distillation systems uh, these are some of the examples of further examples of enhanced surfaces you can see uh, where you know these tubes are called as geva tubes uh, different types of geva tube design uh, are are available in the market and they are formed by by mechanical deformation uh, of this fin type of a structure so as to create a cavity uh, which is a reentrant cavity and this helps uh, enormously in the heat transfer coefficient enhancing the heat transfer coefficient so here are uh, one, one more example of a heat exchanger like an evaporator uh, for uh, petrochemical industry uh, it's a large uh, heat exchanger which are which are actually it's a shell and tube heat exchanger but the tube side uh, has this enhanced structures uh, which are uh, mechanically made uh, different types of designs are available as you can see here these are the cut sections uh, of these enhanced tubes and you can see and that they are uh, made by specialist companies uh, for enhancement of pool boiling and uh, at least one order or one one to two orders of magnitude of heat transfer can get enhanced uh, and therefore it is worthwhile uh, to invest in such technologies uh, where reentrant cavities lead to uh, reduction in the overall volume of the heat exchanger because uh, they are uh, per unit area the heat transfer coefficient becomes very high so here you see a bubble behavior on plane surface and a nukiyama curve uh, is uh, is uh, generated here and you can see uh, that these micro porous surfaces as compared to the plane surface which is shown here uh, they they show an enormous amount of increase in the heat flux uh, you know uh, at at a particular surface superheat Uh, also the bubble behavior uh, is quite different on on uh, such type of tubes because uh, you get enhanced bubble activity uh, and uh, several bubbles and the departure frequency also increases uh, the shape and size also it changes uh, and uh, this is some of some data uh, you know for for fc72 uh, on pool boiling uh, curve which shows an, a tremendous amount of enhancement uh, because of uh, such Uh, specialized surfaces so uh, to close the lecture uh, you know uh, boiling heat transfer strongly depends on surface morphology this is something which we must remember uh, natural cavities where nucleation takes place are typically non reentrant uh, but reentrant cavities they trap vapor and hence enhance nucleation and the resulting heat transfer coefficient can be an order of magnitude higher uh, than simple plane surfaces Uh, there are several ways in which simple metallic surfaces can be converted to enhanced surfaces and many of these techniques are employed in the industry uh, to make very compact heat exchangers for two phase pool boiling duty uh, and uh, such type of reentrant cavities uh, they lead to uh, a reduction in the size and economical activity of running the heat exchanger so with this we come to the uh, closure of this lecture and if you have any questions please don't hesitate to contact me thank you very much Thank you.